Hey, welcome back to Miss Joan Uncut with me, your host, Miss Joan, back with another video. Yes, two videos and one weekend already. Thank you so much for being a new subscriber to all my day ones. I appreciate you. You already know how we do over here. We do not participate in the drama. We just spectate and that's just how it is. Uh, yeah, we're back with another video. I decided to help Jag out a little bit. We're going to just jump right into it, okay? So... Jack has been pushing his Profit Plus. Shout out to Profit Plus and BB Films. I will be playing some of their content today and doing a nice review over Jack interview with himself, Chris Gotti, who is also known as Irv Gotti's from Murder Inc. music label, music group, brother. Okay, he helped run it or whatnot. So I don't know. I noticed nobody really did any reviews on her uh, interview she had with him. And I decided why not, right? Because she told me I probably need to quit doing commentary. So let's let's check out Jack's, you know, um, interviewing skills. Let's, let's see if she really got it. So what I'm going to do today is going to be a little different than my normal content i will be playing a video i made a compilation of the interview just parts that i want to touch on and we're going to go ahead and jump right into it okay let me turn this music down real quick and this is keeping it a bean podcast today i have somebody here that i think is almost actually no some so just to give you a rundown, if you don't know, Jack has a podcast that she calls it Keeping It A Bean. Mm -hmm. Funny how a person who don't keep it a bean wants everybody else to keep it a bean. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she's pretty much interviewing Irv, Irv Gotti's brother. His name is Chris Gotti. Uh, if you are from the 90s, then you know you're familiar with him and his brother. They ran Murder, Inc. And so Jaguar Wright had an opportunity to interview him. And I watched a whole hour. And after I was finished, I had a headache. But we're going to get through it to, uh, together today. We are. We're going to do that. So let's go ahead and we're going to jump in. I will pause when I want to give my commentary. I would say he's definitely more infamous than me, <laughs> but not for the reasons that you might think. Wow. Thank you. This man has had a stellar career, a stellar life, building history, building people, building brands, and now filmmaker. Yeah, I'm blessed. Wow. I'm, be I'm blessed for sure. And Chris Gotti yeah. Like, yeah. on the set. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, you, everything you just said, every time I go back and start hearing someone talk about my, let's say, career or some accolades, mm -hmm. I always look back and I'm like, how did I? I'm really curious about why these fools got sunglasses on, but I'm thinking maybe they high as hell. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I get here. Went fast. You know what? This kid from Hollis, Queens, you know what I'm saying? How did I get here? I didn't go to school. And then I think of all the things I did do and accomplish and help so many people on the way. So that's a beautiful thing for me. So I want to, I want to start here. You are the man behind the man. You could say Period. That. And the reason why I say it with such adamancy is because the one thing you made me very clear, like you got here to the studio and I told you, your brother hates me and I hate him too. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe that. I told you I don't believe that. Sir, we don't believe a lot of the things she says. Jack lies. Hashtag keep Jack honest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but- Irv, I'm gonna ask you about this shit too. <laughs> All that being said, the first thing you said is, is I protect my brother. That's a fact. I protect my family. That's a whole fact. I don't care what it is. No. Family first. It's love, loyalty, and respect. That's my principles of everything I do. And I remember that from pieces of the documentary. Yeah. And then even the intersection between you and Rough Riders. Yeah. Because there's a lot of intersecting history between Rough Riders and Murder, Inc. Yeah, that's family. And, um... 
We changed their whole trajectory if you keep it 100. You changed New York we, for we, a while there. East Coast rap, I'd like to say. That part. I'd like to say that, you know. Um, I remember the parties you know, down Belmar Beach. Shout out, Suge. Hold your head, boy. You know what I'm saying? But Suge Knight was like one of the guys tearing it up, let's say, in music on the East, West Coast. You know, they were selling records in bulk. You oh, know, very much so. You know, uh, Def that was Jam, back when selling records meant something. Def Jam was a, a hip hop label, and they wasn't selling records nowhere near what Def Row was selling. And then Bad Boy came in, yes, and Puffy did his thing. Yeah, but you had Hold no your limit head. though. Hold your head, Diddy. You had no limit though. You know what I'm saying? So I stop here because I want to bring something to your attention. Jag interrupts this man so many times that you can tell by his body language that he is very annoyed. And I would have been too, because she did it quite often. Now, this is an hour long interview. I cut it down to about, I think, 20 minutes. But yeah, I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Yeah, um, Jack, mm -hmm. uh-huh, girl, you, we gonna talk about that. Of course. Like there have been so many awesome dynasties that have had their time of course um to make a mark but the one thing that I will say about Murder Inc and about Rough Riders loyalty <laughs> loyalty 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 That's what it's built on you know where you does know that when, come from for you when you oh um, man the, like damn does she ever turn down she always turned up damn clapping and all that mm. the instillment of loyalty because the truth you know, is people aren't loyal anymore <laughs> no one's loyal anymore so you, know, you must feel it's, like it's so crazy you say that because isn't it funny how she's always saying somebody's not loyal this is jag we're talking about you know that right mm -hmm. yeah the the one person we know for sure that don't know shit about loyal say okay Let's talk about Suge. Let's talk about Suge. Let's talk about Suge and Snoop Dogg. He got that man off of a murder trial. See, for me, for me, there's a level of loyalty that needs to be expressed from his standpoint towards Suge mm -hmm. that may not be expressed the same way. Now, there's other uh, factors that I'm not involved in, mm -hmm. but loyalty gets you through all of those. See, I'm a person that uh, I grew up watching a lot of... So hold on a second. Because you you moving fast. <laughs> and I don't think you... No, girl. He's not moving fast. He's explaining. And your ass just cut him off, heifer. You realize that everyone that's watching right now just heard what you said about Suge? Yeah. And Snoop... And it's like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, again, I'm... No, we know about Suge and Snoop, honey. Where you been? We know, girl. We know all about Death Row. And how he got him out of that 187 case. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you got to. No, uh, you, no. You don't have to. But the perspective. I don't want to be misconstrued on what I just said. No, I don't Snoop want you Dog to be misconstrued. does not have to just constantly give to uh, Suge. But there has to be a, a, a different level of respect for a man that really saved your life. And see, Put let's... that money up for them lawyers to get you up out of that situation, which is life changing. Because if it goes the other way, Snoop Dogg is nothing. Can we talk about the autopsy of the, the breakup reality. between Snoop and Suge? Can we? Did y'all just see how that man body just like went slump? Like, you know what he was thinking, right? I can't get a word in. Ebonically speaking, I can't say shit. <sighs> Jack, mm hmm, mm hmm. You interrupting again? Be honest about that for a second, sure. cause that shit was fucking intense, bro. And yeah. I remember it. Yeah, and that's what I said. I don't have all the other parts to that relationship, but when you mention loyalty, that is the the foundation of loyalty. And and I want to I want to get uh, into know, that. Even even Suge, I'll give Suge with uh Tupac. Okay, we could throw run into him because he went and bailed him out. All them labels could have got Tupac out. All they didn't them, want him out. They didn't want to fuck with him. Now, I will say this. Um, that was a very good point. I never really thought about it that way. Why they left Tupac in jail. And now, it, you know, it always has made sense. But now it definitely 
make more sense why Shig was the one to save Tupac and why Tupac was so loyal to Shig Knight. I just wanted to throw that in there because, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, that man put his bread up, gets some home, gets some work, and makes his hours incredible, and Tupac becomes even bigger than what he was Got because it. of a Shug Knight. When everyone else could have stepped to the table, but no one did. But See, you no know, one, no Suge one talks. is the biggest, baddest man on the block. Me, I'm... Suge is the boogeyman. Yeah. I... You're doing it again, Jag. You're interrupting. You're interrupting, Jag. The question, guys, drop down in the comment section. So Jag be an interviewer? Should she have her own podcast? Mm-hmm. Let me know down below. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you. I'm not saying bear, that he sugar is. Bear, sugar bear. I'm saying that that's that's how people see him. Me and Sugar have our own relationship, right? You know, he tried things with Murder Inc. How do you feel about the calls? What do you mean? The collect? Have you listened to any you know, of the I stay collect out calls? Of this social media shit now, man. On like, YouTube, you know, because I'll sit here and say this: everyone makes decisions based on the need of what they're doing. So yeah. he might need something. See, I'm dealing with Supreme. Shout out Supreme. You know what I mean? Hold your head, boy. You know, Supreme is the OG. He's the, the triple OG, Absolutely. right? So at the end of the day, while he's inside, he has to... It's not like he's here with us. Like, he got to move to get things done You're from inside. talking to a woman that's been through her own bouts with county jail. Sure. I've never had a state number, and yeah. I will never have one. Knock I'm known for beating felonies. Child, she up here bragging about beating felonies. Jaguar Wright is up here bragging and boasting about beat. Ch- just listen, just just listen how you look, child. Jag just just ratchet, child hood rat for real. Here we go. Yeah, I'm gonna knock on wood for that. Well, I'm gonna knock on the wood, but see, I'm a true believer. I'm one of those weirdos. Like I truly believe that whatever I go to God for, as long as my heart is clear, if I declare it in the name of Jesus, it's, it's gonna happen. All charges dismissed. Now, um, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. <laughs> DA came, sat down with me earlier this year in Dallas before I bonded out when they was trying to send me to the state mental hospital. Now, y'all heard it, right? Y'all heard it, right? For those of you that just swear, they were trying to send her to the state mental hospital. State mental hospital. Two. Uh huh. Uh huh, Jack. Uh huh. Yeah. I hope y'all heard that. Okay. Bro, I'm sitting in DCOC uniform. You know, with my bro. Now, in an interview, it's okay for a person to share their experiences with the person they're interviewing, right? Just so they can have a story to contrast with and relate with. But with Jag, no, 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 no. That's not what she does, is it? No, what her ass does is sit here and make it about her. She's trying to one-up him, guys. She's trying to one-up him. I just thought I'd point that out, too. Because sure. I refuse to take my hair down for nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I got to go in A-seg, then I go in A-seg. What I, do I want to fight or do I want to be cute? I'd rather be cute. <laughs> Why go to kangaroo court? Why catch another charge? Right. <laughs> so this heifer rather keep some dingy ass braids in her hair and... You know what I'm saying? And go in, instead of being in population with the rest of the folks. Um crazy enough i'm I'm just saying i'm, I'm hmm. <laughs> right. yeah. but um, i'm sitting there you know yeah. looking like mm-hmm. that looking like inmate number yada yada and here's the da <laughs> we'll we'll let you out of here today five years probation right but I you said, had to do i said that's because when they offer that they come with another well, they just want you see what he's saying? Y'all see what he's saying? So let's break that down real quick, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, girl, I'm getting my life. Mm-hmm. So she said they will make a deal with her five years. Question, is Jag on probation? Now, I heard her case, and I, I've seen, you know, I've watched Danny Robinson. I need to probably catch up on some stuff. She was dismissed, but then some people saying her case wasn't dismissed. So I'm trying to understand, Jag, where's these five years coming from? And then he asked her her well what did you have to do to get that deal because you know in the street if they cut you a deal like that you a snitch Mm -hmm. let me find out jaglin informant a professional snitch 
Mm-hmm. Y'all better be careful up there in Chicago. Y'all don't know Jack like we know, but Jack will call the police and y'all fall out. I'm, I'm trying to tell you. They just wanted me to, you know, go to the state hospital for a couple of okay. weeks. So we didn't have to go to trial. I can't discuss my case. Um, Part of my bond stipulation is I'm not allowed to discuss the details of my case. Otherwise, I go back to jail. But what I can say. Yeah, I hear nothing about if she discusses, she go back to jail because she talks about everything else on the internet but uh, I, I digress it is my charge and it's an f2 felony retaliation against the police okay i got a restraint a bunch of cops put restraining orders on me damn you fucking them up <laughs> Don't have to look at them. so here's the thing she didn't fuck no cops up let's let's clear the ear jack just verbally us uh threatened the police she ain't fucked near nothing, nothing up. Okay, we got the video of her being thrown on the ground, handcuffed and putting the damn jur in the gurney. Okay, and we watched her go up into the damn police station demanding, 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 and then calling up there and trying to get cops in trouble. They got a restraining order against Jag crazy ass because they were more afraid of their life than they than she scared of them because Jag is L -L -O cabeza. Okay, for those of who you don't know, the bitch is crazy. Okay. No, me. It don't matter. <laughs> I ain't stressing the little size. That part. Little size. Size of the fight in the dog. Know I mean? ain't yeah, it, it is. So I'm sitting there. He's looking at me and he's like, go to the hospital for two weeks. We'll let everything go. Five years probation. Boom. You can go home today. I'm out. Peace. <laughs> Guess what I said to him? Yeah. Take me to trial, bitch. Mm. I got your fucking cold. I hear your offer. Child, it ain't nothing when a person try to act more tough than they really are. It's a pet peeve of mine. So you really sat up here and told these DA people that screw you, you'll go to trial. You drag, you'll go to trial. Really, Jay. Jag, really? Do y'all hear this? Do y'all see? See, uh huh. Jag, you you thought you got one. See, girl, I told you, I'm ready. I am prepared, girl. I take my craft very seriously, girl. Me and Jesus talk. Got a whole nother one. All charges dismissed. I'll see you at trial. He yes, said, "Oh, Lord. you one of those religious nuts." Yeah. I said, no, but I am crazy about you. So, you know, it's funny you say that. I'm going to give you a quick. I just want to point something out. That man knows she full of shit. Mm -hmm. So with, yeah. my, with my trial, they gave us three different offers. The last offer, we're facing 20. The last offer in the federal system. This is a fed case. It's a fed case. So this is 85 to 90 percent of the time and they don't come to the table. unless 98 they 98 percent conviction Com rate. Conviction rate. I know. 98 percent conviction rate. The, the United States versus, versus little old you. <laughs> yo, you say that, yo, that was another um part when I was in the courtroom in Phil Ivy. Okay. Shout out Phil, man. That's my brother for real. Like, I got that. And I can brother. see that. I've been with him for 22 years, mm -hmm. going on 23 years. He's a poker player. And so I, am I. And I... <laughs> pause when the hell did jag become a poker player and if she's a poker player why her ass ain't got no money why she broke why we don't never hear about a mother a tournament would somebody care to elaborate and explain to me why she up here lying to this damn grown ass man in his face uh-huh yeah i'm on your ass jag i'm on your ass mm-hmm you should I, play with me sometime. Pause. It, it, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we could. I'm, I play poker too. Okay, I know you do. But <laughs> Phil is one of one, right? That's not. Uh, he's really an anomaly of of what we're talking about. And if anyone doesn't know that, that's who that man is. Google him, search him. He's the best at what he does. My bucket list. I want to play the World Series. Well, that's easy bucket list. Yeah. Just a few bucks and you win. I don't. Ten thousand. I don't. Yeah. So Jack knows it costs ten thousand to get into the World Series poker game, right? Well, she gonna get that money. I, girl, I, I'm sorry. I, what, what did Hove say? 
What did Jay say? <clears throat> Excuse me. We don't believe you. You need more people, boo. Mm -hmm. You do. I played. I played multiple times. I'm a, I'm a winning tournament poker player. Really? What event? A main event. I was a chip leader for three days. <clears throat> Say Good that. man. Yeah. I'm, I am him. It's servitude. With entertainers, it's more like you're fucking with loan sharks. Worse than that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd rather a loan shark than a record label on a lot of levels. And for me, that was why I fought so hard to get out of my major deal when I was at Geffen. Yeah. I could have stayed. But I knew I wasn't going to play the game. I knew I wasn't going to fuck for it. And I knew I wasn't going to snitch for it. <laughs> and I knew I wasn't going to do this for it. That man scratched his head like, here we go. She's making it about her. Again, I understand in interviews that people share a story to give it contrast, to give it to a relation so that it comes back to what the um, person being interviewed is talking about. But this is Jag. So, you know, Jag is making this about who? It's Jag. For it. Yeah. And I knew I wasn't going to do that for it. And I ain't competing with these bitches. And what I do and what I offer is so much different. You're holding me back. Oh, God, are you going to keep me on the shelf? If I got to be fucked up, I'd rather be fucked up on my own steam. Yeah, I could do bad by myself. You know what I'm saying? Then sit on a shelf at a label while you dangle how lucky I am to be there. It's 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 such a it's such an interesting. I smell bullshit. I do. I don't think that's what happened on her label. I don't think she just threw away her opportunity all because she just didn't want to do what they said and she didn't want to be pretty and she didn't want to have to compete with the other women. Lady, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Damn it. Moment. But these are all, again, in, in what these you're last saying, five these, are, these, were, these those were your choices for yourself. Yeah. Everyone has the right to have their own choice because we can sit here and go I'm through. I'm a lone wolf. You know, as much as I'm about independence. The question is, Jag, do you have a choice to be a lone wolf or do you keep putting yourself in predicaments where you end up having to be the lone wolf? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ponder that one. Riddle me that one, Batman. <laughs> the label, that machine had a huge value, right? It has a huge value for those who are in control of it. And that value is either propelled or plummeted by how the people treat the people, the individuals that work in the company. Let's be honest. It's not easy to make the right choices when it comes to putting together budgets. Yeah. You're sitting here looking at pop culture trends. You're sitting here looking at this artist, but she's prettier than this one, but she sounds better than this one, but this ain't the time we need. She got a Christmas record. Like there's a lot that goes along and especially third quarter, because third quarter, you're trying to make sure that those fourth quarters is looking right. So you, you're not in the red and you're going, you, like, it's it's a hell of a lot of work to juggle. So good. And then you go from that to making movies. What's worse, being back in the hood and getting shot at? That part. <laughs> so to deal with that is nothing to me. It's like. Got it. It's simple. Man, we got a little bit of the <laughs> equalizer. We got a little but bit of. We have a little bit of everything at this point. Absolutely. How many things is really original today? Who's <laughs> directing? Uh, I gave a new guy named Ever um, and Santiago, his DP, I gave an opportunity okay. to direct and be the DP, their first feature film. So, and they did an amazing job. I'm so glad I picked them. When they, do we get to see it? We just finished. So I'm going to edit. We are editors in Detroit. I'll okay. be editing out in Detroit for the next month and a half after I leave from here. If you ever need a good jello shot and some real home cooking, you let me know. My sister Kimmy's out there. Okay. Shout out to the big dog, Kibby. Woo, 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 woo. Jag shouted her out. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, this is all before the fallout, but I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? She can make jello shots. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But wasn't you saying that she was walk walking her ass around the studio with her boobies hanging out because her face is too ugly? Jag said that, not me. Jag said that, not me. Okay. On that interview with AT2 about how she was just there to get high and messed up and drunk. And, and you know, she was just walking around the studio and she wasn't working because, yeah, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. All right. And, uh, but once I do that, I'm looking. Awesome. Yeah. Get well, through the holidays I and everything. 
you know you're like my first real interview <laughs> how do you think i'm doing you're doing good <laughs> you're doing good i would you know i would uh i'll talk off here do you so code let, let me decode that i'll we'll talk off here meaning he gonna tell her as stop fucking interrupting me when I'm talking, excuse my language, or he'll politely say, uh, yeah, your posture suck, you're rude, and you keep making it about you. But I digress. Mm -hmm. You hate me yet? Why would I hate you? You didn't do nothing. That part. Because I have so many people that be hating on me for absolutely no reason, never met me, don't know nothing. <laughs> I still but, don't uh, believe Irv, you and Irv, but that's all <laughs> I still don't believe well, you can't blame me for being honest. I'm keeping it on it. I keep it a bean, you bean. know? That's um, it. He looking at her. And he's like, you got my boys on this. And he's, I was like, yo, chill out. <laughs> chill out, Poppy. We good. We, I never we're going to go to jail anybody. for real. I, I tell my family not to come to court most. Lies. You don't tell your family not to come to court. Your family don't go to court because your family don't mess with you and they don't want to have to deal with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the time. No. Nah, because um, I like to go, number one, court is business. I don't agree with you. I, I'm going to tell thank you why. You. I'm going to give thank you money. Whether, and especially if you got a jury. Well, see, that's the thing. You, you I don't do to, jury. Yeah, you, you being. I'm good. bench trial. Right. But I'm a you, bench trial. So the girl. reason. I think it's just so tacky and so unladylike to sit here and brag about what kind of trials. Okay, bench trial. I'm not, I'm not a I'm not a fed. I'm not, I'm a bench trial. And I tell the DA to kiss my ass and where to shove it. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what we have to go through. And this is why there are some of us who call her out because it's all bull shit. The reason, even even that, that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Because what you're missing is the judge, right? Oh, or whoever's absolutely. deciding your fate. Does anyone give a fuck about you? And that's what you're missing. The more support you got in that courtroom, oh, the wow. more they look at, like, I'm affecting this person and all those lives. When they seen all the love and support, they can't, we're humans, we're not dogs. So at the end of the day, whether they fuck with us or not, they have to look at it from a different lens. And see the human and side And say that's the it. human side. Like, look at all these people that love these people. Right. That love them. And unfortunately, Jag don't get that in court. And he is absolutely right. Having family and support definitely determine your outcome. I would know. But I digress. But I digress. Then it in makes, a jury trial, and I'm not very saying, important. And I'm not saying... Anything like it's going to sway them, but it may help. But it helps. It may help. And it's better to have. It helps big time. <laughs> that did not have that. I've seen the empty trials. They don't give a fuck about you because oh, that's what it all. looks like and that's what it feels like. It feels like no one cares about you and whatever they do is cool. Oh, my God. That part was everything to me. That part was everything to me. Jack, did you get that, honey? Your next trial, you might want to have somebody come up there, girl. You don't want them to think that nobody gives a fuck about you, do you? Hmm. Nah, See, people going to care. You make the wrong move, someone's coming for your ass. The case that I have right now, I don't need a jury. Um, The facts... And I wish I could discuss my case with you because I you think me and you, you could don't. bust it up. But we can do that off camera. Yeah. Um, but I, all I can say is a salute to ask. Uh -oh. Last question, promise you, and then I'm going to let you get out of here. But I know that they're going to kill me if I don't ask. Okay. I don't want you to get killed. Your honest opinion <laughs> on Drink Champs. And your brother talking about Ashanti. Your honest opinion. Oh, man, that's a beautiful question. I love it. Honest opinion? Mm -hmm. I have to ask a question with you, and then I'll answer it. Got I, it. Got it. Quid pro, Quid pro quo. You ask, I'll ask. Where's your ex? Which ex? Any one of them. Baby, look, I could do a whole live just on that one question. Just on that one question. Your, your ex. Which ex? Girl, 
girl ooh ooh I wanted to raise my hand and say ooh 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 me 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 can I answer that for her <laughs> which one anyone my shit's is complicated hey, are you cool with your exes some of them yeah she lying she ain't cool with none of them she just sat out here and said shit about Sam. Was it Sam Singer? Sat out here, Goomba. Uh, uh, uh. We don't know any exes between the child. The, the, let's not talk about TJ. Let's not talk about all the Johns in between. You know what? Okay. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Yes. Some of them, I'm the best of friends. You're still the best of friends. Yeah, some of them. Would you? Would your ex? Not nobody I was ever oh, married to. Would you? What's the difference? It don't matter. It's a relationship. <laughs> End of the day, don't you can't put one that's separated. What I'm trying to get at is Irvin Ashanti was in a real relationship. Right. Whether people know it or not. Right. They was in a real relationship. I was basically their therapist when they was going through the trouble. So you were the guy that got the phone call? I was going to the fucking Four Seasons <laughs> and then running to the Ritz Carlton. What did he say? What did she say? What did he say? What did she say? <laughs> Don't that sound familiar? Like when Jags, when Jag was with TJ, right? Denat was the one getting all the calls, and then Kimmy was the one that was getting all the calls. That sound like really, really familiar. I just thought, you know, I point that out too. The shit that only a big brother would do, and I do it. No questions asked. Right. To this day, me and Ashanti like this. That's again. Okay. That's my girl. That's Irv gets pissed, but he's mad because she. He says she wasn't loyal. And I, I'm, I'm. How the hell is Shanti going to be loyal to a married man that's already supposed to be loyal to a woman that he did vows for? I will never understand how Irv Gotti thought it was okay to trash Ashanti when he was married to a whole other person. You know what? I, I really sometimes can't stand people like for real. Outside. Right? And how do you feel? Do I'm going to explain like that. I'm not off. inside like he was. He He's connected with a different bond. Yeah. Completely. His connection is he made records, which is very strong. Yeah. Right? That's magic. Listen to me. You're going to sing it like this, anime. You hear me? <laughs> that part. Yeah, that part. So at the end of the day. You're going to sing it like this, anime. We also know what I did to anime, too, don't we? Child. You know, she knows, like, if she's here, she's laughing. If she, if right. she was sitting in here, she, be she understands, because I talk to her like this. And that's what it was at the end, of, in a sense of that magic of chemistry, mm. right? Then you have a relationship that grew from whatever, maybe because of that magic, right? Mm hmm you know, there's a reason. Oh, there's a reason why something. all these artists get together. Song making is very seductive. Of course, and it as is. an artist, I can tell you myself, some of the most fire ass records happen at some fire ass fucking real rap. See, child, that was so unprofessional. That was so. Oh God, Lord. I mean, I get it. It's her podcast. You can say what you want, but girl had the nerve to critique me. It's child. Okay. It's something about that energy, especially anything in the root chakra. It, it creates a tie between two people that just is undeniable. Yeah, I like, I, I'm trying to create that tie. Look. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of the day, that's what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. And then they become a couple. They together, but they're hiding a yeah. lot of it because the her success she doesn't want to look this way. She doesn't want to look that way. She don't want to look like she fucked for it. Child, that was so tacky, child. That was so tacky. Let's just keep it a B. Okay, so then wow. this, when they get together, that chemistry's Irv really when he started. He was in love with her. I'm telling you. That's what I saw on Drake. All right, Chance. so when you say that, that's what I'm getting He to. was in love the man, with her. The man did. That man is frustrated. I don't care what you say. And, you know, I had to. That man went on Dream He Chance. put on for her. He's if you. I'm talking about I, from I the challenge. Hold on. I, I let you train. ask me a question. Wait a second. So wait a minute. I just want to say this in your brother's defense. Do you see how that man sitting? I'm so glad he has those shades on because his eyes would have told it all. But his body language, you could just oof. Mm. Jack, 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 Jack. Soul Train, 2001. Me, Belial, we were doing our episode. This was when Shamar was still hosting. 
It was down there, at, you know, the sound stages on Gower. And Ashanti came. It was the first time Ashanti came. It was before she realized she needed to cut them sideburns. But Irv had her dress. Now, why you had to bring up that girl's sideburns? Why you had to bring up that girl's sideburns? And how you telling this man more about a relationship that he was actually around like your ass was there? Girl, you was a motherfucking phantom. Child, you know what? Okay. That's that he had her right. And from the second that they walked into the studios, he made sure she was respected. Nobody knew who she was. Right. People had heard about her, me, but Irv. nobody knew who she was. And Irv, he made sure she was treated Irv like a is, queen. Irv is Dr. Frankenstein. He makes mod stars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what he do. Well, ladies and gentlemen, those are the parts I wanted to discuss, and I'm going to go ahead. I don't want this video to be much longer, but I would just give my little insight towards that whole interview. So it was an hour and something long, like an hour and five minutes long. It actually was a good interview, right? I'm not a hater. I'm not going to knock it. She asked some decent questions and some things he explained was actually interesting about his time in the industry and what happened with the feds and how murder ink. Okay, boom, right? So I'll, let me get that out the way. But I just want to point out some things, right? So some of the things I want to point out is the fact that Jack kept interrupting him. He, she would ask a question. He would go to explain it. And then she want to tell him the answer. Tell him the answer. Huh? Huh, Jack? You worry about my commentary. Let's worry about your motherfucking interviewing skills. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So then... She just kept making it about her. She just kept making it about her. Mm -hmm. She did. She just kept sitting there and just want to tell her story and her side and her jail chronicles and child. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's to me, not good interviewing skills. That's why he was going to talk to your ass behind the scene. Then we want to talk about her body language. She was shifty. She was real shifty. Mm -hmm. She kept moving. Sitting like sitting with her feet up, linked over, kept swiping her hair, kept swiping her hair. That drove me crazy, right? She kept, and if you look, her eyes were shifty. She would look over the glasses and her eyes would get to shifting, shifting side to side, shifting. Mm -hmm. she, <laughs> so then, <laughs> oh look, I'm funny. I don't care what y'all say. So then, you know, a positive thing. She did ask like one or two good questions. Not going to lie. And the responses were pretty good. And another good thing, you know, okay. Because Jag was in this industry, right? She was able to relate to some of the topics and situations they discussed. And I thought that was pretty interesting. See, I could be nice. So see, Jack, I'm helping you because nobody else in your crew, nobody else who's, who have channels did any commentary on your interview to get it out there so people could go over to Profit Plus. Shout out to Profit Plus and BB Films because this is no slight to you. Yes, your set um, was nice. You know, camera quality was really good. It ain't got nothing to do with you. I appreciate all the work you do. We're talking about Jaguar, right? Because mm -hmm. she has something to say about my commentary. See, that's why I didn't snap and I didn't get nasty. And I did a little shady read because I knew my time would come. And Jag, now the question we want to ask the audience, should Jag continue doing interviews? Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> I got your ass. Keep playing with me. Keep playing with me. I told you, I'm ready. Uh-huh. You know, but I, you know, you know, I think you have a good thing going. If you get somebody to sit down with you and actually teach you how to do a freaking interview, girl, your hat is out the bag. But until then, Jag, it's still a fuck you. Mm-hmm, it is. Mm-hmm. So if you made it to the end of this, you are a real one. I really appreciate you. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Let me know in the comment section. Did y'all even see that? Did y'all even know that Jaguar Wright interviewed Chris Gotti? I'm just curious. 
You know, what did y'all think about her interviewing skills? Now, granted, I cut it down, but, you know, you got the gist. Let me know below, please. I would love, love, love to have this conversation with you. And you know how we do over here? Smooches. <laughs>